And we don't even know what these things are, like the, the autonomous cars that are being developed. You know, people still think about those as cars, but that isn't what they are. They're autonomous, self-learning robots. Uh, now, John Bengal asks, after humans become completely dependent on AI, and we either merge or become a zoo, where can we find meaning? <laughs> well, there's a lot of hypotheticals in that question. Um, I, don't, I don't really know how to answer that, because I don't, I don't think it's within the scope of anyone's vision to, to, to predict even what's likely to happen over the next 40 years, because the rate of technological advance is so insane that, in some sense, all bets are off. And I really mean that. Um, you know, I, I have a variety of contacts in Silicon Valley, and there are people there that I've been communicating with who believe that it's already within their power to build a, an AI machine that will have higher computational capacity than the human brain. That's within five years. Now, that assumes that they've got the computational capacity of the brain properly calculated, and that's not necessarily the case. But even if they're out by a factor of 10, that's not many iterations past that. Now, maybe we don't understand the brain at all. That's certainly possible. But, but it isn't just the rapid increase in computational power that's doubling so quickly. I don't know if any of you, how many of you watched the Boston Dynamics videos? So how many of you don't know what I'm talking about? Okay, so one of the things I would highly recommend is that you go home and go to YouTube and, and look up Boston Dynamics because it's the most advanced robotics company in the world and it was a DARPA project, so a, an American defense uh, company and they were bought by Google five years ago and they had pretty damn impressive robots five years ago. They were autonomous and, and uh, so they could, they could uh, make their way over rough terrain including snow, up hills, if they slipped on the ice, they could right themselves. If you pushed them over, they could pu put themselves back up. And that's not joystick controlled. That was all autonomous. And they ran on gasoline powered motors and were capable of, of autonomous action for an hour and a half or so. And I looked at the last iteration and it's a small robot about this big and it has a hand that looks like a head. And it's so sophisticated that it can it can gyrate to music spontaneously and it can keep its head in the same place while it does it like a chicken. And so, and it can open doors, and it's like it's it's quite the remarkable creature. And and the the rate of advance from the first robot, which was called Big Dog, which is a very terrifying thing to 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 watch Big Dog, to this is quite staggering. And that's only going to increase insanely that that ability over the next five years. And you know, there's something very strange about robots that people don't generally think about. Some people do. Imagine you have a robot and it can learn a few things through imitation and we already have robots that can do that because you can program a robot, industrial robot that's worth about $20,000. You can move its arm the way you want it to move its arm and then it will move its arm that way. So imitation is, is, imitation is coming up very rapidly and the capacity to autonomously learn is already there to some degree. Let's say you have a robot that can learn a little bit, not much. But then let's say you have 20 million of them and they're all exactly the same and they have exactly the same architecture. And so what that means, as soon as one robot learns something, then all 20 million of them learn it. And so if each robot is learning one thing a day, then the whole herd is learning 20 million things a day. And so the, once, once, once we hit a certain threshold, the rate of increase in robotic intelligence is going to be just something that we can't even comprehend. I talked to the people at uh, Tesla who ran the autonomous car division and they know perfectly well they weren't creating autonomous cars because an autonomous car isn't a car it's a robot and it's not just a robot it's a fleet of robots and it's a fleet of intelligent robots and some of the functions that it will perform will be the functions of a car but to think about that as a car is just you're just confused it's like to think of a car as a horseless carriage um, the, the person who ran the division told me that They'd already had plans instantiated so that all the Tesla cars map the roads and they're mapping them at an increasingly high le level of resolution and then they share the data and they expected to get to the point where the car would be able to predict where the bumps on the road were that it was approaching and adjust the suspension so that when you hit the bump you wouldn't feel that at all 
because the suspension would have mapped the bump before it encountered it. And so, and that's just, you know, it seems like a trivial example in some sense, but it's not trivial. It's, it's, it's an example of how unbelievably quickly this technology is progressing. So now, what are we going to do about that? Well, I'm hoping that we're going to be smart enough as individuals and careful enough and ethical enough and, f and fast so that when we, pr when we, as we continue to produce increasingly intelligent c computers and robots that are going to mimic us, that they mimic something good enough so that it doesn't destroy us. And so a lot of that's going to depend on the ethical integrity of the people who are working on these advanced systems. And it's not like the people who are working on those systems, at least some of them don't understand that because they do. And they also understand the tremendous danger that this poses. So what we're going to do when that all emerges is that's anybody's guess, but hopefully we'll be wise enough to manage it with a certain degree of wisdom. We better.